when you look through early wiring diagrams, you're going to find that tubes can be drawn in interesting ways. And this is the way the tube was drawn on the left here in the original Atwater Kent Model 20 radio. But I've redrawn the diagram and I'm using the more modern drawing here on the right. This is the wiring diagram of an Atwater Kent Model 20. It represents a typical TRF circuit of the 1920s. All the way to the left you can see two connections labeled A and G. It stands for antenna and ground. And all the way to the right are the connections for the batteries. You can see the A battery for the filament, positive, and then a minus B on the same terminal. Then we got a minus A, then a positive 20, and a B plus, which is 90 volts. And you can also see how the horn speaker is connected to the last audio stage of this Atwater Kent. This is showing the two rheostats and the on-off switch for this radio. The rheostat on the left controls the filament voltage for the first two tubes and the rheostat on the right controls the filament voltage for the last three tubes in this set. This is the RF section, radio frequency section of the radio. This is the detector which has RF and audio in it. And this is the audio part or the audio amplifier of the Atwater Kent Model 20. The radio station frequency comes in from the antenna that is connected to terminal A and we've got three connections there to help tune that antenna to the radio and then we have our first tank circuit of the radio. This of course is to tune in the radio station that we're interested in and help tune out all others. Now the DC bias for the grid of this first tube here, that is coming from the bottom of this coil up through the top and through a resistor to the grid. But we also have the RF here and this RF continues on also through the resistor to the grid where it gets amplified and out the plate to our second RF coil in this radio and tank circuit. Notice that we have a step up transformer here and they're trying to take advantage of this transformer best that they can and it's a step up which means that the voltage is increased. Uh, the current is decreased, but this is a tubes are very high impedance uh, devices, so we're more worried about voltage than current, particularly on the control grid of these triode tubes. 
Now here we have our second tank circuit and again the bias for that grid is coming up from the ground at the bottom of that coil up and through the resistor over to the grid along with the RF signal. And again this signal is amplified and again we've run into another RF coil or a transformer and you can see that it is a step up transformer again. What I'm showing here is the return path for the first two stages of this radio. And if you take a look at the first two plate coils at the bottom, if you go all the way down and to the right, you can see that it goes to B+. Plus. But the return path for the RF is going through that 0 0.2 microfarad capacitor to ground. Now that capacitor isolates the B plus from ground but allows the RF to pass through it. Now if that capacitor was open, chances are this radio would not play even though you had B plus at both those two plates in the first two sections of this radio. This is the third tank circuit of this three dialer radio and like the previous two the bottom of it is connected to ground but this time at the top we've got a capacitor which isolates the DC or isolates it from ground. This time we are getting our DC bias through the grid leak resistor to the grid of this tube. This is the detector circuit. Now our RF is still going to the grid, but this time through a DC isolation capacitor, that dot 00025 capacitor, microfarad capacitor. And the RF is amplified again, but this time it doesn't go through the transformer because that's an audio transformer it goes down through another capacitor and gets drained off which seems like a strange thing to do but this tube is doing a lot of work here it is amplifying the RF and it is also going to rectify it in this circuit, the grid and the filament is acting like a diode. The grid is acting like the like a plate in this circuit. So not only is it amplifying the RF, but it is rectifying it, which detects the audio and it's also amplifying this audio and it's this audio that is now going through the transformer and being transferred to the next stage for amplification and this audio again gets amplified and then over to the next stage and one more amplification and then to the horn speaker. This is showing the DC bias for the audio section the last two stages of this radio receiver. From the grid the DC 
goes through the secondary of the audio transformers and then down and then over to the right and up to the minus A battery connection. So the last two stages the grid bias is from the negative side of the A battery. I hope this has helped you understand the TRF circuit better. 1920s radios are still my favorite. Thanks for watching.